as the Britain includes the design of cantilever retaining walls per the latest design codes. But how do you design the wall itself? How do you enter the known information? How do you check the results? How do you specify the loads or the geometry? How do you optimize the design of your wall? And how do you print out the reports? This is Javier Encinas. And today I'm going to present you a brief overview of the user interface in ASDIP written. Let's get started. When you open ASDIP written and create a calculation for a cantilever retaining wall, you see this template. The template is divided in two panes. The left pane is used to enter the known information, so it's the input of the design. The right pane is for the results, is the output of the calculations. So to start the design of a cantilever retaining wall, you need to enter the geometry. The geometry tab is used for this purpose. In the stem tab, you enter the stem material, can be concrete or can be masonry. You enter the height of the stem and also the thickness of the stem, can be tapered. Is the thickness at the top and the thickness at the bottom. The taper can be in the hillside or in the, in the toe side. You can also specify a stem extension of masonry on top of the concrete. Here you specify how many rows of block you want on top of the concrete stem. So the program allows to model concrete stems, tapered or prismatic, or you can specify also masonry stems. Looks like that. So either concrete or masonry, or even a combination of both if you specify an additional portion of the wall on top. As you can see, when you change something in the, in the left pane, you immediately see the result in the right pane. This is graphically, but also you can see the results in a, in a numeric format. Also in the geometry tab, you can specify the footing dimensions. The retaining wall can be supported directly on soil or can be supported on piles. If it's supported on piles, you just click on this checkbox and then the wall is supported on piles, and you can specify the piles uh, dimensions and, and properties. We'll go there in a minute. For now, let's assume that the retaining wall is supported on soil. In the footing tab, you specify the thickness of the footing, the toe length, and the heel length. And you can see all these dimensions graphically in this view. Also, you can specify the shear key. For example, we specify 18 inches of key, and you will see the key being added in this view. In the backfill and cover, you specify the backfill height, for example, can be lower than the top of the stem. For example, we specify 15 feet. So this change is immediately reflected graphically here. In the loads tab, you can specify all the type of loads that are applied to the retaining wall. If we go to the backfill uh, tab, here you specify the different properties of the backfill the density. Here you specify the different air pressure theories. It can be the at rest or Coulomb active or ranking active or equivalent fluid. Also you specify the internal friction angle and uh, the location of the water table measured from the bottom of the footing up. So these are the properties of the backfield to calculate the lateral soil pressures. Also, you can specify a surcharge, a uniform surcharge on top of the wall. Or you can specify also a strip pressure. You can specify also a concentrated load on top of the stem. And if a portion of the wall projects above the top of the backfill, this portion can be exposed to wind. So you can specify here also the wind pressure for that portion of the stem. If the wall is located in a seismic zone, here you enter the seismic coefficients, kh and kb, horizontal and vertical, to calculate the seismic pressure per the Mononobe Okabe uh, theory, or you can also specify the seismic pressure as a uniform pressure you know, on the wall. Here we can see the pressures. This is the pressure due, due to the backfill, and this is the pressure due to the water table. This is the seismic pressure on the wall. This is the bearing pressure below the footing, and this is a passive uh, diagram to counteract the sliding, sliding forces. 
The program generates the resulting forces vertically and horizontal, also the reaction at the bottom with uh, eccentricity, the friction force and the passive force at the back. The program shows the stability safety factors, so you can immediately check your design uh, as you go. If you go to the materials tab, here you can enter the, the properties of the concrete and the rebars for the stem and for the footing. In the bearing soil tab, you specify the allowable bearing pressure, the friction coefficient between the footing and the underlying soil, and the internal friction angle of the foundation soil. If we go to the stem tab, we can see the pressures on the stem. These are factor, uh, factor load pressures and the factor forces. These are the uh, moment diagram and the shear diagram for the stem and also can be sorted by load combination. In the footing tab, you can see here the bearing pressures on the, on the toe to design it as a cantilever uh, beam and also the pressures acting on the heel. If we go to the reinforcement tab, here you can specify the rebars for the stem, for the footing, and for the shear key. So there are multiple controls to enter the rebars, sizes, spacing, to uh, reinforce the, the retaining wall. As the written generates a section view and elevation view of the design retaining wall with all the rebars. If we go to the at a glance tab, we can see a summary of the results where you can see immediately if everything passes or something is uh, failing, and you can take action to resolve the issue. If we go to the condensed tab, you can see a set of calculations in more detail, grouped by uh, topic. So you can check your calculation step by step. But if you go to the detail tab, you can see an even more detailed set of calculations step by step with exposed formulas and with references to the ACI code. So you can see the equations similar to the hand generated calculations. We go back to the geometry tab, footing tab. Here we can see that uh, the wall can be supported on pipes. Let's uh, check this box. So now the retaining wall is supported on piles. And this new tab was created, the piles tab. As the written allows up to three rows of piles in the retaining wall, here you specify the dimensions, the distance between them, the type of uh, pile, the pile size, and the batter angle, if any. For example, we can batter the first pile by checking this box. Now the pile is better. If we go to the materials tab, this new tab was added, the piles. Here you specify the, uh, the pile allowable capacity in compression, in tension, and the lateral capacity of a single pile, vertical pile, lateral load. In addition, if we go to the reinforcement tab, footing, here the controls now reflect the rebars in the in the pile cap. As you can see, the user interface changes dynamically according to the type of retaining wall, if it's supported on piles or is supported on soil. If we go back to the stability tab, here you can see that the program shows the pile reactions for the on factor loads and the pile capacity ratios. So you can check here immediately your design as you go. We go to the footing tab. Here, the program generates this plan view of the pile cap. This is the wall, and these are the rows of different piles in plan view. Also, uh, the wall in, uh, in elevation view, and the pile reactions for factor loads. Uh, the program generates the shear diagram for the pile cap, and also the bending moment diagram. With this information, you can design the rebars accordingly. We go to the construction tab. The program also generates the section view and the elevation view of the retaining wall supported on piles. As you can see, it's very easy to enter the information in the program and also to check the results and optimize the design as you go. 
With this, we conclude the presentation of the user interface of ASLIP written for cantilever retaining walls. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you very much for your attention.